Malachi chapter 3, let's turn to that please. Malachi chapter 3 as we worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Praise God. Good to see your faces. Good to see you. Praise God. And so Malachi 3 verse 10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat or food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you um, blessing. Someone say blessing. Blessing, blessing right? Blessing. Mm -hmm. That there will not be room enough to receive, and I will rebuke the devour for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit before the time in the field. And all nations shall call you blessed. Call you what? Yes. Blessed. Turn to someone, tell them I'm blessed. I'm blessed. It says, for I'm a, you shall be a delightsome land. <laughs> You know, the, one of the reasons why God wants you to tithe and give offerings is we're honoring him. So, you know, we talk about that, about that a lot around here, about the principle of honoring God. But what it helps us to do, it's help to have provision in the house of God so we can do what he's called us to do. For example, you know, when you're at home, different times in the year, sometimes the cupboards are empty and you have to go out and restock them. Right. And it's a similar thing in the local church in, in order to do the things we're called to do in, in ministering to you, in ministering to the community, in having outreaches, having special events. And, you know, sometimes resources can run low. And so we as you give tithes and offerings and and do extra from time to time as the spirit of God in, impresses you and, or, and as you're able, then what happens? There's a restocking of the resources in God's house. And the result of that is that we're able to continue to do what God's called us to do, but also that you, you get a blessing out of it also. Amen? And so we're, we thank God for your obedience. Someone say obedience. obedience. So obedience, not pressure, but giving from your heart because you believe what God's word says in obeying him with your tithes and offerings, but also it's important to know what you're doing with it. Soon we're going to have to move into more of a more specified building fund. Um, but we thank you for your obedience, helping us to preach the word of God, helping us to have special events, special meetings as we've had this year, helping us to continue on media and respond to certain opportunities as they present themselves to us. Amen. Amen. And so are you ready to give today? Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, there's three ways, as you know, to give. You can give by uh, uh, check or money order. Those of you who are personally here or cash. Those given, you can also give by e-transfer, send it to info at foundationforlife.ca or just go to our website foundationforlife.ca, hit the give online button and you can give um, by PayPal or Canada Helps or by your credit card being obedient to God. Amen. Amen. Well, let's say this together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm bringing my tithes and offerings, my tithes and offerings into, the storehouse, into the storehouse, your house, your house that you've established, that you've established for, me for me to receive the word of God. Thank you for blessing my life. I believe your word. I'm honoring you today with my tithes and offerings. And I believe your word today that as I give your blessing, Continues to increase my life. The devourer is rebuked for my sake. And I am blessed in my going out, in my coming in. I am blessed in everything I do, in everything I put my hands to. And I thank you today that money and resources comes into my hands, into my house, into my family, into my church, into my church. And, we're and we're able to do all that you've called us to do in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And, again, and again, I am blessed, I am blessed. And, I am and I am a blessing. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for your obedience. Praise God. You know, as we, as you give just a brief announcement, you know, as, as Foundation for Life, we're called to build lives and families on the sure foundation of Jesus Christ, teaching families, training leaders, and transforming communities. And, 
And we do that through our lives and your lives being blessed and your lives being uh, aligned with God's word. So we're always seeking to move accurately in the word of God. And one of the things, as we've said from time to time, is that we don't just look for people get being gathered into a place. Our heart's desire is that every person become a learner, a student, a follower of Jesus Christ. And so that our lives are aligned with him more and more each and every day. Amen. And you know, when you first get born again, you don't know as much. And even after being born again, you learn, boy, the more you learn is the more you realize you need to know. So there's that growing mentality, but it's not just hearing, it is hearing to do to put it into practice, and that way our lives are transformed, our, our homes are better, our marriages are better, our families are better, our work is better, we, our ministries are better. Why? Because we're following God's word and, and really walking more accurately into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And so, praise God. Let me just issue that invitation. Those of you joining us online, whether it's by YouTube or Facebook or KITV, I'm inviting you to join us in person. If you're in the GTA area where you can be part of a local church family, God is big on family. His kingdom is not, not so much a business. It's not just an, it's not an institution. It's a family. And God wants you connected to a local church family. So I invite you to join us Sundays at 11 a.m. right here at 2950 Keel Street in Toronto. Praise God. We'd love to see you. Well, we're going to get into the word of God today. And uh, as we do that, let's make this confession. It's a practice helping us to receive God's word. Are you ready today? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Turn to someone. Tell them God's word is good. And it's for you and me today. Let's say this together. In the name of Jesus, I declare the blessing of God is on my life. As a result of God's blessing, I am fruitful. I multiply. I increase. I am abundantly productive. As I hear God's word today, I will not only hear it, I will believe it. I will receive it. I will act upon the word of God. I will do the word of God. And God's word in my life will produce good fruit. 30, 60, 100 fold and more. Amen. Are we ready to receive today? Now, turn with me, first of all, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We've been in a series entitled The Household of Faith. Household of Faith or the Family of Faith. We're, we're in a family. We're, and the and the, the um, family of God is known by their faith in God. And part of the objective why God put, put this series in my heart to share with you is to help us all to know how to better live by faith and trust God. Mm -hmm. And so things we've been looking at is going to really going to help us. And so the first thing we looked at was um, discovering the real you. Then we looked at feed your um, faith, feed your spirit, excuse me. And last week we looked at faith food. But by way of um, um, review, if you will, what we did, we located in the Bible, from the Bible, when it says to believe God with your heart or, or what your heart is. We found out from scripture that when the Bible uses the word heart, it means your spirit. And 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 says, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. Notice it says spirit, soul, and body. So in God's eyes, you are first what? A spirit. You have a soul and you live in a physical body. So you've got to, you've got to see, you've got to renew your mind to think that way. To think the way God sees you so that you can see yourself that way. Again, say it with me. I am a spirit. I, am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a physical body. See, so, so, so inside you, there is a spirit. You're a spirit being. And where we get that from also in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says God made man, mankind, humankind, in his own image. God is a spirit. In uh, John chapter 4 tells us, verse 24, God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. That's why humankind, mankind, the species of man is the highest being, we could say, in the universe because we're the closest thing to God, because we're made in his image. 
as much as we have, you know, I see, you know, videos of animals and how, how, um, how emotional they are, you realize animals are not made in the image of God. They do have a soul, but not, they don't have a spirit the way we do. Say it again. I am a spirit. I, am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in the I live in a physical body. So we saw that. Then turn to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. So again, we believe God with our spirits. That's the first thing we wanted to establish. And you've got to remember that we believe God with our spirit. We believe God with our inside. And you'll see how more and more this, this will help your faith. You believe God with your what? Spirit from the inside. So Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says this. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain... Now, Jesus is showing them how faith works. And because he, before that, in verse 22, he says, Have the faith of God, or have the God kind of faith. So he says, now because we're made in the image of God, God is wanting us to live like him and the way he functions. So he's a faith God, and if we're children of God, then we're a faith children of a faith God. So he walks by faith, we must live by faith. So he's telling us how he does it. So Jesus said, so Jesus answered said to them, have faith in God, have the God kind of faith, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, someone say say, so he says, says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. It w he will have whatever he says. So don't doubt with your heart, but believe. Believe those things. Where do you believe? In your heart. Where do you believe? In your heart. In your heart. In your heart. Didn't say believe with your, with your body. Didn't say believe with your senses. You believe where? In your heart. And it said believe those things he says. So if you have it in your heart, it's going to be in your mouth. Amen. He'll have whatever he says. That's a great verse. So you should know this verse. You should under, memor, uh, meditate upon it because you'll see and understand more things the more you meditate it upon it month after month, year after year, and apply it to your life. So Jesus said, you, the, the God kind of worth work, work, works by believing with the heart and saying it with our mouth. Now go with me to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, we looked at this as one, as one of our initial principal scriptures. Um, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, 10, and 11. Romans 10, verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You realize that's how you got born again. You believe the good news. Someone told you the good news. You believe it in your heart and did what? And said it with your mouth and a supernatural miracle. Something happened on the inside of you. You were changed. You were transformed. That's how you got born again. You realize that's really how we're to live and appropriate the other blessings of God in our life. And so he says now, for with the heart man believes, with the what? Heart. With the heart, so underline that. With the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, with the what? Mouth. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, look at this, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. I added that this morning because I know I only had 9 and 10 and I was looking at that. But you see, if we do this, we won't be disappointed. If we do things God's way, we won't be disappointed. If we do things God's way, it doesn't mean sometimes some time will go by. There may be some challenges that we'll face. Usually there will be some challenges. But in the end, you won't be disappointed. You'll get the results God wants you to have. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So it says, for with the, with the heart, one believes with the heart. Say it again, I believe with my heart. I believe with so my heart. That's where you start. It believes with your heart, and you do what? And you say it with your what? With your mouth. You know when you fall, when you love someone, fall in love with somebody, what happens? It starts where? In the heart. And then get what's happened? You get so full of love for that person, then what does it happen? It comes up where? Into your mouth. So that, that, I mean, there are examples that abound in our natural lives. So you believe with your heart. And I'm emphasizing, where do you believe? First, 
In your heart. And then it shows up where? In In your mouth. And so the thing is this, it doesn't really become a reality until what? You say it with your mouth. You've got to say it. Tell someone that you've got to say it. You've got to say what you believe. You've got to say it. You've got to say it. So we believe God with our hearts, with our spirit. I'm impressed to really emphasize that. So we believe God with our spirits, with our hearts, right? We believe God from our inside, not from the outside. Turn to this one, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, please. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. That's a very simple, very short verse. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. For we walk by what? Faith, Faith, not by? Look at that. We walk by faith, not by? Sight. Sight. And so faith is of the where? Heart. Heart. So it's of your spirit. Not by sight or your senses. Or your physical senses. So we walk by what? Faith, not by sight. Do you see why we have to emphasize this subject? Because if we're weak in this subject, we'll be very weak in our walk with the Lord. So if we don't know as much about this subject, we can know all these other things, but we're very weak in our walk with God because God is a faith God. Are you listening to me? So we walk by what? Faith, Faith, not by? Not by sight. Of course, so you need to go by your physical senses for different things. I notice the temperature is dropping. So what's going to happen? We're going to feel the temperature on our bodies and you're going to turn to go from the... AC to the (laughs) furnace soon. You're going to go from uh, wearing no jacket to wearing (laughs) jackets and then heavier jackets. So you you better go by your your physical senses in in those instances. Maybe you know God is saying, if you're going to walk with me, I've got promises for you. I've got things I want you to walk in and you're going to walk in them by walking by faith, not by sight. Faith is of the what? Heart, not the senses. Everyone got that? Are we good? Amen. And I'm just being slow. So I want to make sure we're going to get into this. Romans chapter 4. We're going to stay right here for the rest of uh, our time together. So we're looking at, we're going to share our message today is faith and praise. Faith and praise. It's Thanksgiving Sunday. So combining our thanksgiving with our faith. But you're going to see how the two how those things, our, our praise is a part of our faith life. But pay attention, it's going to really help you. So Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Faith is of the what? Heart. It's of the heart. We believe God with our what? Heart. With our hearts. Okay, if you, you get that, it's going to help you. And you're going to see this. This is a great example of that. So Romans chapter 4, faith is of the heart, right? It's of our spirit. We believe God with our inside, not our outside, not our flesh. So Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith, the faith of Abraham. Look at this, the faith of Abraham. So you're going to see, this is, um, Abraham is seen, is really highlighted to us as a great example of faith. And so if he is then, um, God applauds his faith more than he does many others. And the Bible says in, Genesis, in Galatians 3 that we are the seed of what? Abraham. So, see, why? Abraham was a man of faith. God wants us to follow his example of faith. And that's why this is written here for us. And verse 17 says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. So this, is, this is the word now God gave to Abraham. And he said, in the presence of him whom he believed, who believed God, who gives life to the dead, as though they were, as though they did happen. So he says, so he, um, God says, and then verse 17, verse 18, sorry, who contrary to hope, in hope believe so that he might become the father of nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be and be not weak in faith he did not consider his own body being dead already dead since he was about a hundred years old 
and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith or strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Now, I want you to pay attention because we're going to see some things here that's going to help your faith and my faith today. And um, so if we go back, verse 17, he says, I've made you a father of many nations. This is Genesis chapter um, 12, Genesis chapter 15, Genesis chapter 17. Different times God spoke his promise to Abraham. And so what I want you to focus on, I'm going to look at verse 19 and 20 are the main verses we're going to look at today because there's some real lessons for us to learn. Because it says, so God gave this promise to Abraham. Someone say promise. promise. And you know, promise are words spoken to you. Someone says, you know what, I will give you $1,000 tomorrow. Meet me and I'll give you. So um, that's a, I've given you words. Right. And, you know, you don't have a right to act on someone's words if they've not promised you anything. And so Abraham got these words. Again, you can see it in Genesis chapter 12. Um, and initially, um, and then if you look at um, Genesis chapter 18, when God visited Abraham, you know, he, he had some struggles initially. But he finally got over and really believed God. And you're going to see the, the um, part of the process here, and it will help our faith to trust God. And so look at what it says here. Be not weak, verse 19, be not weak in faith. He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's room. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced, someone say fully convinced, that what he had promised he was able also to perform. So now, and then, therefore it was imputed, accounted to him for righteousness. Now, this is given to us so we could learn how to live and walk by faith and get faith results in our lives. So now, the first thing you need to underline, write this down, promise of God. God, God gave Abraham a promise. He gave Abraham a specific promise promise that even at his age, initially when God encountered him, he was 75 years of age, and he gave him a promise, you're going to have, you're going to be a father of a nation, and then nations. He said you're going to have children, when he didn't have any. And so, he eventually got over into a place where this, that is written, was a reality. He actually got a hold of it and believed it. Like I said, if you read from Genesis chapter 12 to 24, you'll basically get the life story of Abraham. He, he was challenged initially because his body, he was old, his wife was old, but God did something supernatural in their lives as they believed what he said. And I wanna encourage you today, if we learn what they learned and do what they did with God's word, you are guaranteed to see results. Amen? And that's why I'm, I'm excited to, to share this with you because it'll help us. So again, Abraham got a promise from God. Someone say, someone say a promise of God. He got a word from God. And it tells you, it says in verse 17, as it is written, I've made you a father of many nations. So that's part of the promise he was given. Now in verse 19, go back down there. He says, be not weak in faith. He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So now, that's one thing. He got God's promise. These verses tell us what? Number two, he believed. He put trust. He put confidence in God's promise. He trusted God's promise. He believed God's promise. Everyone got that? Yes. So he got God's promise, you'll be a father of many nations. 
I'm just telling you, we got, we got this right in these verses. I'm, I'm just telling you what the word is saying here. But he got God's promise, but it's not good enough that he just received God's promise. God's promise didn't work all by itself. Someone has to believe that promise. That promise was given specifically to Abraham. He believed it. Someone say he believed it. He put his trust in it. He put his confidence in God's promise, in God's word. Everyone got that? So he said it. Now, part of what helped him is this. When God, in Genesis chapter 18, it says, God says, your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham, which means father of nations, father of a multitude. So guess what happened? He started saying the promise of God. He kept saying it. He also kept hearing it because his servants and his wife kept calling his name. And every time he heard his new name, what was he hearing? Father of nations. That's why one of the things we established with you is you've got to believe it with your heart. And you've got to do what? Say it with your mouth. So tell someone you've got to say it. You've got to say the promise. So he believed. That's part of trusting it. That's part of believing it. So he got God's promise, one. But then, two, he believed it. He took possession of it. He realized, this is mine. I believe this. This is God's promise to me. Now, it says he didn't waver or didn't consider his own body being already dead because of his age and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't waver at the promise of God through unbelief. Now, number three is this. He refused to look at his body or Sarah's body. Remember we said we walk by what? Faith. Faith, not by sight. So when we're dealing with the promises of God, God's promises come to pass by what? Faith. We have to trust God's promise. We have to look singularly at the promise of God. So that's what it says here. He looked, he, he, number one, he got God's promise, God's word. Number two, he believed it. God, you've spoken this to me. I accept it. It's your word to me. I accept it. But then there was the challenge of what his physical body was experiencing. The challenge of his wife's body. That naturally, this is impossible. But the promise is what was most important. It says he refused. So he had to, in some case, he had to ignore what he was seeing in, with the senses because what his senses were telling him contradicted God's word everyone got that so when you believe in God's promise what happens you cannot he says he didn't stagger let me go back he said he didn't consider his own body he did not waver so now the waver is to do what is to change to believe God one day believe his body the next he had to get right over where the only thing he believed was what? The promise of God. Because it tells you right here, he staggered not. He didn't consider his own body already dead. Doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't ignore what his body was. It says his body was dead, his, his wife, the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he didn't waver at the promise of God through unbelief. See, unbelief, not trusting what God said, not believing but it says he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So again, I wrote down, he refused to look at his body or Sarah's body. He didn't cancel out the promise of God by taking his eyes off the promise and looking at his body and Sarah's body. If you'll see this, you'll understand where we miss it and where we lose the faith fight a lot of times. is because we take our eyes off the word of God and we get it on our physical senses or what's been manifested physically. And then we start looking at that and believing that. And you can't believe two things at once. See that? He said he didn't stagger. He didn't waver at the promise of God through unbelief. So the wavers do what? To take his eyes off the promise and go over onto what his body was telling him. Everybody see that? This is really, really important. So again, he got God's promise. He believed 
God's promise. To believe God's promise. Now, we didn't say that. No, notice it didn't say. It didn't say that his body wasn't dead or his wife's body wasn't dead. Notice, so believing God is not in denial. You know, it's, it's not um, saying what isn't. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because it tells you his body was dead, but the thing is this. He didn't look at that. He looked at what God said. That's the issue. He would not, he said, that's that. I'm not contradicting, that's happening, yes. It's like a sickness in your body, yeah. Um, th that's happening, yes. But you know what? I'm believing the promise of God. I'm not looking at that. Do you understand that? You, you've got to get this. You, you've got to get a hold of this. It will help you. I'm telling you, it will help you with your faith walk. Because a lot of times people come to us, and I, why I'm, I've changed years ago, how I pray for people, I found a lot of people who come for prayer are not believing anything. I'm telling you, that's my conclusion. I've watched it over years. They're just hoping. They're saying, just pray for me. And why you know that? Because they say, they'll ask you to pray and they'll ask an, a, as many other people to pray for them. And I'll tell you why, it's because we've not done the, the job we should have done in teaching people the word of God to know how to believe God. So if I go on and on and on about this, it's because we gotta get this right. I don't wanna be part of the problem. Are you listening to me? So it says, he got, hear me now, he got God's promise, but then he, what did he do? He believed God's promise. Someone say believe, and I'll keep going back. You gotta get this, I gotta get somebody to hear this today. You gotta believe that. It's not good enough just to have the promise. You've got to believe it personally. Are you listening to me? He believed God's promise for himself. Number three, he refused to look at his, the physical evidence. What was going on? Because look at what it says. It tells you his condition, tells you his wife's condition, but verse 20, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He refused to allow his circumstances to shift his faith off of God. Are you listening to me? That's why it's important to know, where, where do we believe God? In our hearts, in our, hearts, in our spirit. He, believed, he, he refused. He said, God, that's God's word, and I know it's true. It's true for me, and no matter what's going on here, I'm believing that. That's why we took some time a few weeks ago to help you to focus how do you meditate God's word how do you, how do you believe God's word you've got to find the promises of God you've got to meditate it get it on the inside of your heart make the decision this is what I believe this is the this is God's will for my life amen so and then number four he was strong in faith or his belief in God's words really a repetition of two but see he refused to let go of what he believed so when you believe in God for something, there's going to be opportunities for you and I to take our hand off of God's promises. And that's what most people do. Many people let go. Something happens, a, a symptom happens, a, a, situ, a bad news comes, and what happens? They change their belief. It says right here, he didn't waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He, he continued to believe the promise of God. He would not be deterred. And he says, giving glory to God. So he believed God and his word to him before he saw any changes physically. Write that one down. So he believed God's word to him personally. He took it personally. He believed God's word before he saw any changes physically. Now, that's the big deal here. That's why Jesus said, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be removed, be cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, listen to this, the things he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. Look at that. Here, it says here, he didn't waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. That's telling you and I, he was giving glory to God, believing God, think about this, before he saw any changes. 
What most believers want to do is this. They want to see changes before they believe anything. You see that? No, believing produces seeing. You understand that? It's not seeing to believe. It's believing to see. Got to get that. I'm telling you. You've got to believe it first to see it. See, that's why believing is where? In the heart. You've got to know what that promise was. So Abraham, think about this. Abraham, 75 years, walking around. I'm the father of many nations. And no children. His body was the same way. But did you know something happened in his body and Sarah's body? Because we have the, re the text for it. Something happened to renew Sarah's body to conceive. Because how would a, a foreign king be attracted to an old woman? Think about that. So the, the, the believing produces the seeing. Yes. It's not the other way around. It's not seeing it and then I'll believe it. That's what Thomas said. He said, I'll believe it. You know, if, if I see it <laughs> and then I believe Jesus. And so Jesus did not commend the Thomas kind of faith, did he? No. So Jesus commands and God commands the Abraham faith what believes. Yes. We believe first. Yes. Someone say you believe first. believe first. See, and you believe it in your heart. Yes. You got to believe it in your heart. And that way, if you know what, where you believe, that's why we spend time. If I know where I believe it first, no matter what happens on the outside, I keep my believing right. And you keep it with your saying. Are you listening to me? And then number five. He gave glory and praise to God. I think about that. That's where now we had in the praise. So that means he said he was strengthened in his faith, giving glory to God. I'm going to say glory and praise to God. So part of what will strengthen your faith is praising God. Because it says it right here. He says giving glory to God. Now, so now he was thanking God before it happened. That's right. That's right. Got to get this. That's We've right. got to get this. Now remember, all Paul is doing is explaining and amplifying through his writings what Jesus said about faith in Mark 11, 23, and 24. And it's for us to learn it because we can get a hold of it. Praise God, we'll have it. In different areas of our life, whatever you need, these things will happen. And the more we become, we could say, cooperate with it, the more proficient our faith becomes. Right? We become more skilled in it. So look at it again. Praise God. I mean, he did not wave. Look at verse 19. Be not weak in faith. Now look at this. So that means there's different levels of faith. I so wouldn't say that. And Jesus even in, in the gospel talked about small faith, little faith, no faith, great faith. It's just what he says in the gospels. He commanded a woman, and a foreign woman, Syrophoenician woman. He said, great is your faith. So Jesus is a, faith, <laughs> is a faith person. Are you listening to me? And so now, look at, um, I said, oh yeah, verse 19. Be not weak in faith. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving what? Glory, Glory to God. He gave what? Glory to God. So he was praising God. Thank God, I'm the father of nations. I'm the father of of nations. He was praising God. He was thanking God. See, when we think about this, you know, when we lead and we start at 11 o'clock and we start with worship and praise, what are we doing? We're praising God. We're glorifying God. Sometimes people have said this, you know, we're worshiping God. I just sense the presence of God. So that's why we do that. Why? It changes the atmosphere. It brings God on the scene. Well, you know what? You can praise God in your own home. In fact, you should be. You can praise God in your own space. In fact, you should be. Hey, listen to me. So what, what are you doing? You're, you're acknowledging your faith in God and his promises. That's what Abraham did. Look at it. Look at again, verse 19. And be not weak in faith. So he's telling you how not to be weak in faith. He, he, sta he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Was what? Strong. Oh, so look at this. Turn to someone, tell them you can be strong in faith. 
Now, it tells you how we were strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now, turn this, you know what? Can you say glory to God? I heard Brother Hagin say this. Look at this. So if you can say glory to God, oh, let me ask you this. Do you believe God's word? You believe God's promises? You do? And can you give glory to God? That means you can have strong faith. So believe God and give him glory. Give him praise. Just thank him. And that means he did that regardless. He didn't look at his senses or his physical body to tell him that he can believe God or praise God. He did it irrespective. Again, we believe God where? In our hearts, on the inside. And we do what? Say it with our mouth. Isn't praising God usually? Our mouth is normally involved. So guess what God is um, asking, really in instructing us today, encouraging us to do more of? More praise. More praise must come out of our mouth. And that's not necessarily to let other people hear. It's to him. Are you listening to me? So in your own personal walk, you're praising God. You're in the car, you're thanking God. You're going for a walk, you're praising God. In your home, praising God for that promise. Are you listening to me? So he was fully con convinced that God's word would be manifested in his life. Now, let's apply this to ourselves. Do you have a promise from God? So whatever you're, you're, um, you're dealing with, no matter what you're faced with, it could be a sickness, it could be a financial need, it could be a wayward child, whatever. You know, do you have a promise from God? Because that's how Abraham started. So the, the, uh, the, the Abraham kind of faith isn't just making something up. It starts with a promise. That's why we started this. Abraham had a promise from God. He held fast to it. He started with a promise. We told you the testimony of Carla, one of the scriptures we had to stand on because it was life and death, was um, Psalms 117, verse 18, you shall live and not die and declare the praises of God to your generation. I mean, I mean, no, that's a promise. Someone say that's a promise. So you've got to get a hold of that promise. So that's why I'm asking you, do you have a promise? You know, what scripture, what verses have you received from God? You could have heard a scripture that someone quoted and said, yeah, let me find that for myself. Or you've been in your own studies or you've been, you've, there's something, you found these scriptures. That's a promise from God. There's many promises. In fact, there's thousands. Someone said there's 3,000 promises in the Bible. So think about this. Promises that apply to your life. Do you have a promise from God? I'm saying that if you want, if you believe in God, you gotta have, you gotta know. And what verses have you received from God? That's number one. And number two, you gotta believe that promise with your heart. Someone say you gotta believe it with your heart. So when you believe it with your heart, you're accepting it. This is mine. It's it's personal. So for example, you believe in by his stripes I'm healed, or himself Matthew eight seventeen himself took my infirmities and bear my sicknesses. Or 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear my sins in his own body on the tree that I being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. So that's the promise of God. Someone, someone tell someone it starts with the promise of God. So that's why when, when you come together, we, we declare the word of God strong so you can believe it. Because faith comes how? By hearing. And hearing and hearing. So again, it starts with the promise of God. Number two, you believe that promise with your heart. Turn to someone, believe that promise. And sometimes you take the time to meditate on the promise of God. This is mine. You go over it, meditate, go over that. Sometimes it's just one promise. I told you that one, one promise. One promise can change your life. One promise can heal your body. You know, one promise can change your financial situation. Are you listening? But, but it's accepting it and taking it to heart. And not just going by a lot, lot of people that are doing it wrong. They're, they're going by a hope. I just hope God does turn, turn this around for me. I just hope, you know, enough people are praying for me. You know, people are under the fallacy. I hear people all the time. They're trying to get on this prayer line and this prayer line. And, you know, let I mean, I, the more get hundreds of people to pray for this situation. I know, it, I know this is not popular, but that, is, that normally doesn't work. I'm just telling you. Because there's no faith involved. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? 
And so you got you to gotta have a promise. Someone say, have the promise. You got to know what you believe. I'm just going by what Abraham experienced. We talk about the Abraham kind of faith. He got the promise. Number two, he believed it. Someone say he believed it. He believed it with his heart. Someone said he said it. See, he meditated upon it. So he kept saying it. It's mine. See, himself took mine from it. She shall, not, she shall live and not die and declare the praises of God to her generation. We kept saying it and saying it. Someone say you got to keep saying it and saying it. See, when you're saying it, what are you affirming it? You're confirming it. You're saying, this is mine. I will not be denied. This is what I believe. Everyone got that? Number three, don't allow your physical senses to cause you to shift from your faith in God's word. You got to keep saying it. Number four, keep saying it. Keep faith in God and his promise. Keep saying it. Someone say, keep saying it. Keep believing it. And then number five, give glory to God. Give praise to God. Say, Lord, I want to thank you. I just give you praise. Praise God. Amen. You know, for children's promise, anyone with children, you always believe in God for your children. And you know what? The seed of the righteous shall be what? Delivered. Shall be. Again, you're believing what God says regardless of your physical senses. In fact, if you go by your physical senses, some of these situations, it'll drive you buggy. <laughs> You listen to me. <laughs> but the way to stay out of that is that, man, you've got to believe what God says. Turn to someone and tell you, you've got to believe what God says. And don't change. No matter what's happening, no matter what you're seeing, no matter what you're hearing, I believe what God said. That's the Abraham kind of faith. And it tell, tells us that's what Abraham did, and he got what he believed which was the manifestation of God's promise. Now remember, so believing like this is that you're not making God or you're trying to make God do what he doesn't want to do. No, that's why we start what? With the promise. We know what he said. God told Abraham specifically, you shall be a father of many nations. Then he brought it up, said, you are the father of many nations. Abraham started believing that. He had to, I know I'm repeating myself, he had to ignore his physical senses, his circumstances. Why? We walk by faith, not by sight. Are you listening to me? We're, we believe what God says. Not what people say, not what people's opinions of us, but we believe what he says. What does God say about the situation? He prays, and it says, man, he added his faith to it, or he released his faith through praise. He started praising God. He started thanking God. I'm the father of multitudes. I'm a father of nations. Praise God. And what happened when you start doing that? See, your spirit, your faith is on the inside. It starts rising up strong and starts overcoming the situation. Turn to someone, tell them I'm an overcomer. Glory to God. See, that's why you've got to keep hearing the right things. That's why we try to be a place where you come and you hear what you need to hear to overcome. You're hearing words of faith. And then my last scripture, go to Psalms 103, and I'm going to ask you to join me in praising God. This is a Psalms of praise. Everyone get that today? So again, you start with what? The promise. Where do you believe it? In your heart. You don't look at your physical senses to see that that is changed. No, you, work, you believe it first in your heart. If you believe with your heart and stay with it, you will see it with your natural eyes. That's the objective, amen? But that we do what Abraham said. I'm going to read, before you do it, I'm going to read again, so we, so we leave with this. Not being weak in faith, he didn't consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Look at that. He didn't waver. Turn to someone, don't waver. Tell them again, don't waver. So don't shift from what you believe. That's what it means. Don't shift. Don't start believing what you're seeing with your natural eyes if it contradicts what God says. So you've got to believe what's inside. God's promise. I believe that more than what I see on the outside. She shall live and not die and declare the praises of God to her generation. You've got to believe that. Amen. The, so praise God. So then he says he didn't waver. Turn again, tell someone, don't waver. Don't waver. Don't, waver. don't get, see, waver is, is when you now, you're, oftentimes when you're discouraged because you're not seeing 
what you want to see, what happens? You can get discouraged. And in that place of discouragement, what happens? You shift your faith to what? What you see. People go sometimes, they can go weeks and months, and they're not in faith. Why? They're locked in on their circumstances. And it's hindering the faith process. But we're going to praise God today. Amen? So Psalms 103. Psalms 103, praise God, we'll quit with this. Again, this is a psalm of praise. It's a psalm of thanksgiving. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Are you going to praise the Lord with me? Amen. Are you going to give glory to God? Amen. Hallelujah. So again, we talked about faith is of the heart. And so you're doing this from your spirit, from your heart. Whatever promise of God you have from your heart, in your heart, let it come out of your mouth all the time, several times a day. I mean, many, many times, let God know. Let your faith know. Praise God. Stir yourself up. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Notice, you see, his soul now. Remember that you, you are a spirit. You have a soul living in a physical body. So he's talking to his soul. He's talking to himself. Ever people heard about self-talk? Most people self-talk, that's where they get in trouble, is very negative. Got to watch if you're negative about yourself. People are talking to themselves all the time. A lot of times they're, they're down on themselves. People do strong, wrong things on the outside because they're, their head's wrong. They're thinking wrong about themselves. That's why we've got to renew our minds. And that's a continual process. Got to cast down wrong thoughts about yourself. Look what it says. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. That's right, you can say it with me. Who forgives all your iniquities. Now remember, he's talking to himself, right? So when you're saying this, because we already talked, oh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So it's everything here, he's talking to himself. This is wonderful. Let's go to the top, let's do it again. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Just join me. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. This is what belongs to me. This is what belongs to you. Who forgives all your, my iniquities. Yeah, you can personalize it. Who heals all my diseases. Who redeems my life from destruction. Who crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is, re is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. That's to you, right? Slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Oh, listen, God's not mad at me then. Praise God. He will not always strive with us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy to those who fear him. That means respect and reverence him and honor him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities or has compassion on his children, so the Lord pities or has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to their children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Look at that. We command angels. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. 
Bless the Lord, all works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Boy, I tell you, that's good news. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Why don't you just worship the Lord right now? Oh, we thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. If you want, you can just stand and just praise God. Just take some time to thank God. And that promise, that word that, you, that you've taken possession of, that you believe in God to manifest in your life, just declare that before the Lord right now. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we worship you. Oh, we're giving glory to God. Our faith in you is strong today. And we're giving glory. We're giving glory to you. We're giving praise. We're giving thanksgiving. Giving. We're giving great gratitude to you. We appreciate your goodness. We appreciate your mercy. We appreciate your kindness to us. We appreciate every benefit, every blessing that you brought into our lives. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Our soul blesses you. Oh, praise God. We're just letting ourselves know. Praise God. Your goodness. Your goodness towards us. Your goodness towards us. Thank God we know we're forgiven. We know we're righteous. We know you've made us innocent and pure and free from guilt and condemnation. We know, praise God, we're just and righteous and new creations. We know, hallelujah, you've healed us of every sickness and every disease. Oh, we thank you today. We thank you today. We thank you today. Oh, we bless your name that you're the great provider, the great supplier of our lives in Jesus name oh thank God you've kept us you've kept us you've kept us from accidents and calamity and death and destruction you've crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercies oh praise God we thank you now we thank you that you've given your angels charge over us and in their hands they bear us up lest we dash our foot against a stone oh we thank you today Oh, we magnify you today that our children are taught of you and great is their peace and undisturbed composure. Oh, praise God, we're the, they're the seed of the righteous and they're delivered. Thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that rises against us in judgment is condemned and shown to be in the wrong. We bless you today. We praise you today. We praise your name today. We glorify you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, the Abraham kind of faith. That's what we have. Praise God. Praise God. We believe the word of God with our hearts. We're saying it with our mouth. Praise God. And we'll see it with our eyes. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. We praise you now. In the name of Jesus. Woo, praise God, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God, praise God. So God's telling us today, add praise to our faith. You know, let the praises of God come out of our mouth. And I tell you, the more you praise God, the less time you have to be complaining and grumbling and looking at the negative side of life. Hallelujah, somebody. Those of you who join us by live stream, we're so glad that you joined us today. I want to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life. If you don't know him, I'm telling you, God loves you. He cares about you. And we just read that scripture, as far as the east is from the west, and east and west don't meet, so far is removed your transgressions from us, from you and me. So you have the opportunity today to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life. God's not mad at you. We just read a scripture. He's not mad at you. He's not angry. He put his wrath and the punishment for your sins and my sins on Jesus so that you could be brought into the family of God in a moment. Praise God. Pray this simple prayer to receive Jesus as your Lord today. God in heaven, I thank you for loving me, for caring for me. I thank you for showing your love for me by sending Jesus to die for my sins, to bear my sins. And the punishment for my sins on his body, on the cross. I believe Jesus is the son of God. I believe Jesus bore my sins in his body. I believe he died for my sins. I believe Jesus was raised from the dead for my justification. I confess 
He is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. I receive him as my Lord, as my Savior, as my King. I thank you now, Father. I call you my Father. Fill me now with your mighty Holy Spirit. Make me brand new. I will live for you all the days of my life. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you can now call God your Father. Jesus, your elder brother and Savior. And you're now a member of the family of God. Let us know that you prayed that prayer so we can join you in faith and believe God with you and help you to continue to grow in the word of God. Well, until next time, we just bless you and thank everyone who's joined us to worship the Lord today. Let this, be, this day and this week be a, a week of thanksgiving. Add praise to your faith today and be strong in faith, giving glory to God. See you next time. Praise God. Hallelujah.